Hey everyone, I'm Jennifer from Gen W Arts and welcome in today's video. Yes, another video this month. Quite a lot, isn't it? Um, it's basically also because I wanted to par participate in this month's challenge, the Mermaid Challenge. Uh, it's my first time and I had bought a bunch of art supplies a couple of years ago with the intention to review them and to use them at the time but a lot of stuff happened back then so I never got around to use them so I thought well with the mermaid challenge these art supplies are the perfect stuff to work with since well these things are called uh, mermaid markers and these are the sparkle markers so yeah I'm gonna use these today to make something cute mermaidy and yeah fun so um i hope you enjoy the video let's get rolling so today i'm finally having a go with these jane davenport art supplies starting with the mermaid markers there are 12 colors in this pack which all look very tropical and even have sea related names such as beach and lobster. So in my opinion these are the perfect materials to use for the mermaid challenge. <laughs> When taking a closer look at the mermaid marker, you can kind of tell that they're just basically a water brush filled with dye-based ink. Uh, if you remove the cap, you can tell they have a bristle nib. And if you want to use the ink, you have to remove that yellow little ring in the middle. So the ink can flow onwards to the bristles. To help the ink reach the nib, you have to squeeze it a couple of times and well, as you can see, it comes out plenty, so you have to be careful. The next products are two sets of sparkle markers. One set is called Warm Seas, which have all the yellow and red plus a gold color and the Cool Ocean set has the blue and the green tones and a silver color. Unlike the mermaid markers, these markers do really look like markers in my opinion. And just look at the design of each pen. I really like that silver shiny portrait on each pen. And of course they also have very sea beach themed names on them. And the, the nib of each pen is like a regular broad felt, felt nib. And the ink is very shiny and sparkly, so I guess they'll be very fun to play with for little details or highlights, something like that. The next item is this little travel brush. And it also looks super fancy in that gold high chromium color. And I had a little bit of trouble figuring out how to open it up, so I was twisting and turning it, but then I found out that all you have to do is like pull it and then the bristles come out. It has a very nice pointy tip and it might be a little bit too small, but I think it's great for detail work. And then the last item is this creamy pastel set. Um, it comes with various kinds of applicators and a, a cute little tin which you could use for watercolors if you remove the, the pastels inside. So there is this lipstick applicator, which is, it is kind of original, but I don't really see myself using it because it's kind of small and I don't think it's very handy to use. Then there is this, you know, makeup sponge-like applicator, which looks a bit like the pen pastel applicators. The pastels themselves are quite creamy and not anything like normal pastels or chalk soft pastels. They are a bit fatty and creamy. They also have a faint shimmer to them. So yeah, they're a bit, a bit strange, but they might be fun. Although I'm not really exactly sure how to use them yet. I suppose they're more designed to use for small details such as blushes or yeah small details um here i tried the lipstick applicator and i didn't really like how it felt in the hand 
it's kind of tiny and I just I don't know I think it's a bit gimmicky it is cute and fun but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna use it but anyway let's get moving on to the actual swatching and find out how the products perform for the swatches I am using the dilutions creative journal um, I started out with the sparkle markers and found that the gold marker was really dry and scratchy. Now, they had been laying around unused for almost two years, so it's probably due to that that they are so dry. So I found the idea to try and revive the marker by dipping the nib slightly in water, and that seemed to work. Then I found out that they are actually pumping markers, so after a few pumps the ink came out nicely and super glittery. All of the markers seemed dried out, so I had to repeat these steps to all of the markers to revive the ink again. But I really like how sparkly the ink is. Also, the ink is not water soluble, but becomes permanent after it's applied to the paper. Next I am swatching out the mermaid markers. All the colors are very vibrant and can be nicely diluted with water, just as you can expect from dye-based watercolors. So as you can see these sparkle markers, the ink is really really nice and sparkly. It's, it's so nice, I really love it. And the mermaid markers, they're just like any liquid watercolor, very vibrant and translucent. I wasn't sure what to draw yet, so I started by writing down some ideas. I knew I wanted to do something with cats, because, well, cats, I love cats. And I just didn't want to draw a mermaid, because, well, that's just too obvious. So I made some quick and tiny sketches based on the words I wrote down, which were cats, sea beach for location, and mermaid and catfish. I tried coloring one just to see if I would like painting with watercolors on this paper. Also, I accidentally got a drop of ink on the paper, so I turned it in a ball of yarn and had a cat playing with it. Really, you have to be careful not to squeeze the mermaid markers too much, or you get a big splotch like I got there. And you don't want that to happen on your artwork. In the end, I went with a total different idea, as I did not like the ideas I had previously sketched down. So the next day I got a new idea, which was a bit more original, or at least that's how I felt about it, because a mercat has been kind of done a lot by other artists already, so I felt I should do something else with the cat fish idea. <laughs> so I drew a new sketch, which I forgot to record, but I will show it at the end of the video. And based on that sketch, I created my final illustration. I used a reference photo of my own cat for the drawing, which I thought was perfect for the idea I had. And I drew it from my phone, so that's why you saw me with a phone in my hand. So the idea is basically of a cat sitting halfway in a plushy, snuggly shark bag, while looking all like, help! <laughs> the first shark pose wasn't working for the composition and left too much empty space on the paper, so I erased it and flipped the head of the shark and positioned the body in a different way to create a better looking pose and overall composition. Sometimes you have to go through the trouble to start a portion over again to get a much better result. Also after playing around with the watercolor markers on the creative journal, I decided to do the final illustration on watercolor paper as the paper of the journal absorbed the paint too fast and it was too hard to re-wet the applied colors after. So I took my Fabriana watercolor sketchbook to give the markers a fair try. I used a size 3 Sakura micron pen to ink the outlines of the sketch. The ink of these pens are resistant to water when dried and won't smudge when you go over the lines with watercolors. And yep, here was my little boy Sid demanding some attention. <laughs> I always like to put some weight at certain points of the line art by making these lines thicker. This way you add interest to your line art and it looks more dynamic. Luckily dye based watercolor inks are always transparent so you don't have to worry that you lose portions of your line art. Opposed to pigment based watercolors which can be semi opaque. Mostly colors where titanium white is mixed in with. 
So for the first portion of the painting process, something went wrong with the recording process, as I think I did not press the record button good enough. So it did not record while I thought it did, so my apologies for the missing part. But what I did was squeezing some ink out of the blue, yellow and turquoise markers on a plastic palette and used a larger calligraphy brush to pre-wet some areas of the background and use the ink of the markers on the palette to drop some colors onto the paper, letting the free colors feather out on the wet paper and flow and ultimately mix with each other to get a nice soft bloomy effect. On the lower portion I again pre-wetted the paper and applied the ink directly from the marker to see if I could get a similar effect. The ink spreads well and can be quite easily lifted if you re-wet dried up applications and dab it off with a paper towel. Later I mixed a dark brown color with the blue on the palette and painted some wrinkles around the cat on the blanket with the small travel brush, which kept its sharp point amazingly well I think. Then I thought it would be fun to add some bubble patterns on the blanket with the yellow and green sparkle markers. And again, I really love how glittery the inks are of these markers. However, the ink itself is not opaque, so you have to keep that in mind if you want to use lighter colors over darker ones. So I decided to make yellow bubbles on the yellow and lighter parts of the blanket and green bubbles on the darker parts. I really enjoyed working with all the supplies so far, even though I think the mermaid markers are quite pricey, I think the fact that you can refill them afterwards with liquid watercolors or just use them as plain water brushes after cleaning them up really well does make them a worthwhile product. I believe there are refills for these markers and their respective colors, but frankly I suppose if I were to use them up I would refill them with some of my Ecoline watercolors. The travel brush I loved a lot more than I thought I would. Even though it's not really suitable for painting large areas, it is amazing for small details and oh, it's just so pretty and shiny. And it's so easy to use, plus it has no bits that can get lost and doesn't have to be assembled only to fall apart during usage. So yeah, apart from the mermaid markers, which aren't anything special to look at, I think the other products are really neatly designed, designed like the sparkle markers and the travel brush and the unique looking cream pastels. They are really eye-catching and make you want to use them. Sadly, I did not find a way to use the cream pastels a lot in this painting, as the color scheme of the pastels did not really suit the colors I used in my painting, as they were a bit more skin toned. I just used it at the end to add a blush to the shark's cheek. <laughs> no, not the teeth. Um, also, I found these pastels were water repelling, so I couldn't use them in combination with the paints or water. So, like the sparkle markers, I think they are more meant to use for finishing touches at the end of your project. All in all, I really did enjoy and do really like these supplies, but I do think they are a bit on the pricey side, at least here in the Netherlands they are. But maybe that has something to do with import taxes or something, I don't know. <laughs> so we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this review and my take on the mermaid challenge. With a twist! <laughs> if you enjoyed it, please leave me a like. Also, if you have ever used these products or any of Jane's other products before, let me know what your experiences were in the comment section. Or if you have suggestions or just want to say hello, then feel free to leave a comment behind as well, as I enjoyed reading through them. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any of my future content, then hit the subscribe button and the bell button, so you get notified whenever I release new content. Thank you very much for watching and for your support for my channel, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Have a great day and keep on creating!